Um, today's topic is going to be best practices for working with an hourly associate. Hopefully by now you've heard about Law Clerk's latest offering, our latest option to hire the help you need, and we call that program Hourly Associate. Of course, I'm going to go into some of the details about what that is and how it works, but um, uh, I also want to share some general information about kind of what's going on with legal outsourcing and how attorneys are getting help to power their firms. So away we go. So the really exciting news, I think, is that, uh, you know, outsourcing is not only on the rise, I'd say it's in the mainstream now. More and more business savvy attorneys are turning to outsourcing to freelance lawyers to get work done. And, uh, you know, it's this is across big law all the way down to solo and small firms. We're seeing a rise in that. And we're also showing uh, data that that rise is probably going to grow three times in the next few years. So this is definitely the way of the future and the way that your future law firm is likely going to be staffed. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. Sorry. So when it comes to Law Clerk, if you're here, you probably have already heard about us, but if not, or if you're watching the replay of this on YouTube sometime in the future, uh, you can find us at lawclerk.legal. And this webinar is really ge geared for our hiring attorneys, the people that need help with their practice. And for those attorneys, we offer now three ways that you can access help from talented freelance attorneys when you need it. First up, we have our project-based work. Now, this has been the cornerstone of Law Clerk since our inception. Since day one, we've offered the ability for a busy attorney to connect and work with another attorney project by project as needed. So if you, have, you need someone to come in and write an appellate brief, one piece of work in appellate brief, you can post that as a project on Law Clerk and get that help that you need. Okay, so that's been our the way we've operated for five years now. In January of 2021, so two years ago, we launched a subscription-based program. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a way for you to connect with one dedicated remote associate uh, in a freelance capacity for a set number of hours every month. Uh, this is geared for the written work, although there is an option as well for a full associate. I'll get into that a little bit later on. But this is really a great solution for those attorneys and those firms who have kind of a predictable quantity of work. You know you're going to need someone 60 hours a month, or you know you're going to need someone 80 hours a month. This is a fantastic solution for that. And January of this year, uh, just last month, we launched a new option to allow you to hire by the hour. By far, the number one most requested feature we've had since our inception was, um, you know, attorneys love the billable hour and they wanted a way to work with talented freelance lawyers on an hourly basis to pay for the work as they go by the hour, because that's often how we're billing our time and our services to our clients. And thus we rolled out our hourly associate option. And hourly associate is really geared to fit kind of in the middle between a project, you know, it's more than one piece of work. So it's not a project, but it's maybe less than a subscription because you are not committing to 60 hours a month. You're not committing to a set number of hours a month. With hourly associate, maybe some weeks or months you send over a large amount of work and other weeks or months you send over quite a bit less. So it's going to fluctuate as your workload fluctuates, which is why it's such a great solution for a lot of attorneys and firms who, you know, have those ups and downs. It's natural. It's, it's part of running a law firm. So this is kind of the whole spectrum here of how you can get help uh, through Law Clerk, either project-based, now hourly, or subscription. Uh, today, we're going to focus on this newest option, hourly associate, and I'm going to be sharing some best practices for um, you know, how to maximize your productivity when you're working with a freelance lawyer in an hourly associate type arrangement. Okay, first, just a couple of basics about hourly. Of course, we have a lot of other resources about hourly on our website and other videos if you want to access those as well. But, you know, this is geared for the written work. Okay. They're, these hourly associates are not going to go to court for you. They can't take depositions, but they can help you with all of that really time consuming overflow written work, things like research, drafting correspondence, discovery, um, and of course, you know, motions and pleadings and any sort of transactional document as well. Um, this is, can be a great way for you to staff up for seasonal demands. You know, do you have a big year-end rush for some reason? Do you have uh, an immigration practice where you're racing to meet deadlines for certain types of visa applications? Whatever your seasonal rush is, if it's once a year, a couple times a year, you could use an hourly associate to staff up during those times and get that work done. 
uh, as we've already talked about, it matches very well with the ebb and flow of a litigation practice. You might need a lot of help when you're gearing up for trial or in trial, but if that case suddenly settles, it's going to drop down fast. And the good thing with hourly is you aren't committed to sending that attorney any certain number of hours of work per month. Um, and, you know, it can also be a great solution when all of a sudden you're faced with a huge amount of work and a fast deadline. Maybe you just got hit with, you know, a deal, a, a new deal for your client and you need to complete due diligence and review thousands and thousands of documents and summarize them and understand them in a very quick time frame. Uh, hourly associates can help in that type of situation as well. So, okay, that's a little bit about the hourly associate program. And of course, as I've mentioned, our website has a ton of more materials, or you can reach out to anyone on our team, and we'd be happy to discuss the hourly program with you as well. So now I want to go into what you're here for, 10 best practices. These are 10 best practices when you're working with a freelance lawyer in that hourly associate relationship, and you're sending them work from time to time, whether that's every single day, once a month, uh, twice a month, you know, whatever it may be, these are some solutions that are going to help you find success with that and get the help that you need for your firm. Okay, so tip number one is to um, start now, okay? Hourly Associate is such a fantastic resource because it's help at the, you know, tip of your finger fingertips. Yeah, you can log into your law clerk account and ask your hourly associate to jump in and help with work when you need it. But you need to have it set up first. So you might as well start now if you're interested in having a freelance lawyer available to you to do work on an hourly basis. You know, it takes a little bit of time for you to find the right candidate. You know, do you need a one to three year junior attorney to help with some of that extra discovery work or research? Or do you need someone more complex? Whatever your unique needs are, we have thousands and thousands of freelance attorneys in our network. And it's great to just start that process sooner rather than later to, you know, put up the hourly posts and have the right applicants apply to you so that you can find them. Now, uh, you know, another really great feature with this is that you can start the hourly associate search in your law clerk dashboard. So if you already have an account, you can log in, you'll see the easy prompts to, to start the process to find an hourly associate. And you can start this in just a few minutes. It's not a cumbersome process. Um, so, you know, I always say start now, that way you have this person ready, you found the right hourly associate for you when you are ready to go and you need some help. Okay, tip number two, check your to-do list, okay? So once you've found the right hourly associate for your firm's needs and, um, you know, you, then you want to put them to work. And one of the best ways to do that on a regular basis is as you are going through and updating your own to-do list on a daily or weekly or monthly basis, look for things that you know you either likely don't have time to do. They're going to require a big block of time that's going to be challenging for you to find that day or week or month, um, or find things that you just don't want to do anymore. You, cause you would rather spend your time on business development, meeting with new clients or higher strategy type work, whatever it may be, whenever you are updating your own to-do list, that is the perfect time to scan it, to identify work that should be delegated to your hourly associate work. That is not the highest and best use of your time, but that you want to have another talented attorney begin working on instead. So tip number two, Check your to-do list often, excuse me, check your to-do list often and delegate ASAP, okay? Number three, delegate a, an alternate contact person, a point person at your firm. So the reality of being a lawyer is you're busy and sometimes you're just not available for large amounts of time, whether you're in a deposition, trial, um, if you're, you know, meeting with, you have a big client meeting out of town, you have to travel or whatever it may be, maybe even just a vacation, but it's a definitely a good best practice to have someone else at your firm that the hourly associate can go to when they have questions. They have, maybe they need another document that you forgot to send them, or they, you know, just need to find out the formatting style for a certain pleading. Whatever it is, you should delegate someone else at your office that the hourly associate can turn to when you're not available. Okay, this could be another attorney. If you have other attorneys at your firm, that's great, but it doesn't have to be. It could be your legal assistant. Um, it could be your paralegal, but just make sure you have someone, especially who can access key documents that the hourly associate might need to keep their work flowing. You don't want your, uh, you know, inaccessibility to be a log jam, which is why having another point person they can go to is really a great idea. 
Number four, set regular meetings. This is similar to like um, a calendar meeting or a case status meeting or, you know, just any other type of regular meeting that you're already doing with your existing team members, whether they're in office or virtual, you should have a set regular meeting with your hourly associate. This could be once a week, twice a month, once a month, whatever the cadence is that's good for you. Um, just get it on the calendar, commit to that time and don't, don't cancel it. Um, you need to try to figure out the best time of day to make it very likely that you're going to get to that appointment and not have to reschedule, whether that's early in the morning or maybe towards the end of the day or over lunch, whatever works for you. But these meetings are going to be great because they are dedicated time that you can answer any questions that your hourly associate may have. That way, if you know they know you're going to be in trial, but they know you're going to have your regular meeting on Thursday afternoon, they can wait and ask their questions then. This is also a time for you to find out how they're coming along with work that you've already assigned them that's in progress, uh, to find out you know, what help they need, and to give them an idea of what additional work is, in, is coming their way soon, and to make sure that they can meet the deadlines you need for that work. So these meetings don't have to be long. In fact, they can be very quick. Um, it could be 15 minutes or less, usually. Um, and some weeks, if you don't have any new work to send their way, it might be even a, a simple email or text saying, hey, um, no meeting this week. Uh, I'll touch base with you again next week at our next scheduled meeting. I don't have any more work for you right now. Um, but these regular meetings are going to help facilitate communication, keep work flowing, and uh, get you the type of work that you want. Number five, I suggest that you provide templates. So a lot of attorneys ask us, hey, should I provide like a form or a template to my freelance attorney that's doing this work for me? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, the reason for that is it's just going to enable them to have an idea of your style, your formatting, what you're looking for to get that final work product a little bit further down the road, closer to what you want as the final work product, okay? Um, another great reason is when you're working with someone on an hourly associate basis, you're obviously paying them by the hour for the work they do. So if you provide a form or a template, they're going to be able to work faster and more efficiently, which is going to save you money as well. So definitely I suggest that you provide a template wherever possible. You know, a lot of times maybe you're going to have the hourly associate work on some discovery requests and you could give them a template of interrogatories you've used in a, another case and you might provide them a few key issues or notes from a meeting with a client that would give them insight into the details of this case so they can customize those interrogatories for the new case that you're working on. So definitely provide templates. Number six, don't rush. <laughs> I know that some of you are like, lady, you have no idea how crazy my practice is. And I'm so busy. Um, look, I get it. I'm a lawyer as well. I'm married to a lawyer. Things come up and emergencies arise, but as much as possible, try to avoid sending any rush projects to your hourly associate. You really do want to give them enough time to do their best work and not put them in a situation where they're hurried, they might overlook something or make an error. So definitely give them time to do their best work to succeed. Um, and, you know, eventually you'll get to the point where you've worked together long enough that maybe you do need to give them something on a fast turnaround, but try to avoid it as much as possible. It's going to result in a better experience for both you and your hourly associate. Number seven, know that you can have more than one hourly associate, okay? So that's the really cool thing about a flexible tool like Hourly is you could use it to have more than one talented freelance lawyer on standby, ready to help you on an hourly basis when you need it. This is great for any attorneys or firms that have a multiple practice area type firm. Maybe your firm does family law and immigration. Fantastic. You could have an hourly associate who specializes in family law to do the family law overflow work you could have a different associate available to help with the overflow immigration work. This way you can tap into the expertise of two different people to streamline the work rather than trying to find one magical associate who can do it both. So always keep in mind that you could have one, two, three, you could have as many hourly associates as you want um, to fit your practice needs or the skill sets that you need for your firm. So I think this is really um, a great option to, again, create a creative, flexible way for you to staff your firm. Number eight, as with anything we're doing and the practice of law, communication is key. Whether you're meeting with a new client, you're presenting a webinar, you're arguing in court, you need to 
communicate clearly and concisely. And that's definitely true with your hourly associate as well. Make sure that you're taking the time to give them proper instructions at the start of new work so that they understand what they need to do, what you expect from the work, and to answer any questions. You need to be responsive when they send questions along the way. You know, Let them know your preferred communication style, whether that's email, a Slack channel, good old fashioned uh, telephone call, whatever it may be, let them know your preferred communication style for questions. And then when they do contact you with those questions, be responsive. Or if they're looking for, you know, feedback on a draft document, they want your edits, get those back to them as, you know, within a day as quickly as possible. So communication is key. Uh, I think a lot of us would like to hit the, you know, mythical easy button and send some of this work to a freelance lawyer and just think they're going to handle it 100% independently and beautifully, but they do need our help and we owe it to them to be good communicators and set them up for success as well. Tip number nine, even when you're working with an hourly associate, don't forget that you can still post projects on LawClerk as needed, okay? Um, So projects will always be a tool that you have in your back pocket when things come up. You know, maybe let's go back to my prior example. You have an immigration and family law firm and all of a sudden one of your immigration clients comes to you and needs um, a lease agreement for a new rental property he just bought. He wants you to write a lease. Well, that might be a little bit outside of your scope and you probably don't have a form just laying around for this type of lease agreement, but that would be the perfect time for you to log into Law Clerk, post a project to a lawyer who has experience writing lease agreements and have them prepare that for your clients. So, you know, when oddball one, one-off things come up, Or maybe your hourly associate is maxed out because you're just sending them so much work. You can always post a project as well to make sure you're getting work done on time and you're getting really good work done as well. Okay, and last but not least, number 10, even when you're working with an hourly associate, always consider if moving to subscription might make more sense for you. The big reasons why uh, moving from an hourly associate to a subscription or adding a subscription would make sense would be if you need more help beyond written work, okay? Only with a subscription of 40 hours a month or more are you able to have what we call a full associate. That's someone who could talk to clients, go to court for you, handle depositions, et cetera. That would, it allows them to engage in the practice of law as long as a set of certain specifications are met. But, you know, if you need a commitment from an attorney for a block of hours, subscription is going to be a better choice for you. If you need someone to do work as a full associate, then a subscription is also going to be a better option. So again, with subscription, we don't have long-term commitments. So you can flex in and out of projects or hourly work or subscriptions, depending on how your firm is advancing and growing, how many clients, what kind of clients you're bringing on. But you know, don't forget about the subscription option as well. I think that's a very important tip when you're working with an hourly associate. All right, folks, I'm going to check now if we have questions. Um, thank you for joining me today. Again, I hope that you are have all heard about our hourly associate program. If not, go check out some of the other resources we have on that. But no matter what kind of help you need, we at Law Clerk are here and we are committed to helping you succeed. You've got this, but you've also got help from Law Clerk. Um, you know, visit us at lawclerk.legal. If you haven't signed up for an account, you can do that for no fee and no monthly fee. Um, And if you like learning by video, uh, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of videos on there, some great resources. And of course, we would love to connect with you on your social media platform of choice if you have one. So uh, with that being said, I'm Kristen Tyler on behalf of everyone at Law Clerk. Thanks for joining me today. And I hope that these best practices for working with an hourly associate were helpful for you. Thank you. So for those of you on live, I will be hanging around if you have any questions. Um, If not, thank you and um, let us know if we can help. All right. Stop the share. Thanks for joining everyone. Recognize a few names here. I know sometimes it takes a little while to type up those questions. So it looks like maybe we have one. Okay. Uh, Jody asks, is this available in Canada? Not yet, Jody. Someday. Uh, As of right now, lawclerk.legal is only operating in the United States, but um, I think Canada is probably, you know, on the horizon. Um, Francis, you've got some great questions here. 
Uh, yes, yes, Jody, I will keep my Canadian friends in mind. Absolutely. Uh, Francis, okay, how can you test the uh, hourly associate attorney? Great question. Let's say that you find someone while you're interviewing for hourly associate and you want to test them out first, have them do a project for you. That's a great way to see how you work together, what their writing style is like. You know, also keep in mind that we do provide writing samples for all of the freelance lawyers. So especially if you're hiring them to write, um, you know, some sort of a, a persuasive pleading, a motion, a brief, whatever, um, they will have writing samples on their profile that you can look at. You can also look at their reviews and ratings from other attorneys that they've worked with to see how they've performed in the past as a freelance lawyer for other attorneys. So, you know, we provide a lot of data to help you look at their credentials and find the best person. But if you find someone and you really want to test them out, I would suggest uh, having them do a project or two for you before you go into an hourly associate type working relationship. The rates for hourly associate. Um, so you set the rate, Francis. Um, so, you know, we are seeing rates all across the board. Um, I apologize. I Let me go double check what the minimum rate is. But um, yeah, you set the rate as the hiring attorney. And, you know, if that for some reason makes you nervous, know that you can work with your dedicated law clerk advisor and they can help you set the right rate. Okay. Um, new hourly associate. I believe the minimum hourly rate. Oh my gosh. I can't find it. There is a minimum. It's 90 an hour is the minimum. Okay. That's the minimum that you can pay you can go up from there. Sky's the limit. It's just like anything you have in life. You are going to get what you paid for. And, um, so just know that it is hourly. You set the rate, your, your advisor at law clerk can help you. Um, okay. We've done a lot of these here. Hey, Daniel, great question from Daniel. Um, he asks if the, um, hourly associates, if they have their own resources, like legal research, um, a provider, that is a great question. Yes, they do. Um, they are responsible for having their own Westlaw, Lexus, whatever they're using to do legal research. And, you know, it's important to know a lot of the state bars provide as a member benefit access to the various legal research softwares at um, affordable rates. So maybe at your firm, you have one of the fancy plans with all the bells and whistles, and it's very expensive. A lot of freelance lawyers are using variations of that, uh, but still having access to high quality tools. So Another great question here from Anonymous. Um, the question is, what can the subscription lawyer do that hourly can't? Uh, it's all of the things that would cause a lawyer to engage in the practice of law. So hourly associates are just for written work, written work in the background under your supervision, okay? With subscription, a subscription of 40 hours a month or more, um, and a few other requirements, um, the subscription associate can do work as a full attorney. So they can talk to clients, they can talk to opposing counsel, they can go to court, they can attend and take a deposition, all those things. That is only through our subscription program. And again, if that's confusing, I'm sorry, um, your dedicated law clerk advisor can absolutely help you talk through the two options and what's going to work best for you and, and where to place you. So that's the big difference about whether or not they can act as a full attorney. Hourly, no. So sub subscription, yes. Wow, I can't say that word. <laughs> um, another question related to this, um, on subscription, if an attorney is working as a full attorney, meaning they're going to court or taking uh, depositions, they would be added to your firm's malpractice insurance policy. So the question was about how is insurance handled? If the attorney is engaging as a full attorney under a subscription working relationship, it would be your responsibility to add them to your insurance policy. And we do verify that before the working relationship commences. Great questions. Um, another question here related to, so it, the question is, so does subscription do in-person tasks? They could, um, you know, obviously if you find someone in your same geographic area, but um, really all of our options are geared for remote work. That is what many freelance lawyers want. Um, that's why many are leaving the traditional practice of law, going to a freelance legal career because they like that flexibility to work remotely. Um, there are 
it's a possibility they could come in office or do in-person tasks. Um, it just depends on the situation and that individual freelancer if they are willing to consider that. These are fantastic questions. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm gonna hang out another minute, see if any others come up. Okay, another question on subscription. If you were using a subscription associate as a full attorney, so they're you know properly licensed and on your insurance and all those things, uh, for them to go to court, what needs to be arranged? Virtual court uh, is definitely what that is intended for. So, you know, a lot of national practices, bankruptcy, IP, they are doing hearings this way. A lot of courts, um, very few courts are mandating only in-person appearances from what we're hearing. Um, and some courts, it's an optional thing where you file a notice that you intend to appear by video conference equipment. So yeah, it would be um, a virtual appearance. Now, that being said, I know probably some of you are joining from a state like California, where maybe you have a hearing in three different counties on the same day, and it's a big state. Um, you know, we have a vast network of freelance attorneys in California, some of whom are willing to do that appearance work in person. So again, if that's what your need is, let's talk and see if we can help you find a match to fit your firm's needs, whether it's virtual court hearings, in-person combination. You guys get an A++ for questions today. Thank you for all of these great questions. I always enjoy that. So I'll hang out another minute or two to see if someone's typing another question because I, I know it can take a minute. Oh, I got one. Uh, question from Francis. Is there a minimum of months for the contract? Great question. Okay, I'm going to answer that both for hourly and for subscription. So our hourly associate... There is no set hours per month. There's no uh, time length. So um, you could start an hourly associate and maybe in month one, you give them five hours of work. And in month two, you give them 12. And in month three, you give zero. Month four, you give zero. Month five, you give 20. Um, there's no contract or anything saying you have to give so many hours per month for so many months. None, totally flexible. That's hourly associate. For subscription, you are committing to say, I am going to give this person, you know, 40 hours a month, 50 hours a month, whatever it can be. You can go all the way up to 160 hours per month. We have a number of attorneys who do have a full-time remote associate as part of their team via Law Clerks subscription program. Um, the subscription program, it, there's no long-term commitment, but you do need to give a 30-day written notice to terminate the ongoing subscription, to give us notice and give the freelancer notice that after the next month, you're not going to be continuing. So it's a one month notice, very flexible again. Uh, the other cool thing with the subscription program is let's say you start out at 40 hours a month and then you realize you have three trials coming up and you need to go to 80 hours a month. So you, you go from 40 to 80, get through those trials. Then you're like, okay, I need to go down to 60. You can flex up and down very easily. Uh, depending on how many hours you need for the foreseeable future. So that's a good thing too, if you want to keep your subscription associate locked in, but you need to vary the hours as long as they do agree to it, we can be very flexible with you. Uh, another great question here is if the chosen subscription attorney doesn't work out for whatever reason, can you switch without dealing with the cancellation notice? Yes, you can. Um, or let's say your subscription attorney, you know, is going to take some time off because they're having a baby or they end up taking a full-time job. You know, things happen. Life happens for the freelancers too. If they can no longer work with you for whatever reason, we're absolutely going to work with you to switch to a different subscription attorney. And that same 30-day notice does, will not necessarily apply. Um, so yeah, uh, another great question. What are the benefits of a subscription attorney versus hiring directly? Uh, the big benefit is number one, the flexibility, um, and also the overhead savings. So when you hire a full-time on the payroll, you know, W2 employee of your firm, 
um, there's a lot of expense that comes along with that. Um, for sure, adding them to your medical uh, malpractice insurance, for sure, adding them to all your benefits, health insurance, 401k, disability, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to be responsible for their bar dues, their CLE, their office space, their equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All in all, we, you know, our rule of thumb is we encourage attorneys when you're looking at hiring a full-time associate attorney, you can't just look at their salary. Okay. Maybe you're going to pay them a salary of hundred thousand dollars a year. I picked that for round easy round numbers. Okay. Maybe the salary is hundred thousand dollars. You can easily anticipate to spend another 30 to 40% of that for all of the benefits associated with that. So, you know, you're hiring a hundred thousand dollar a year associate attorney, but all in all the total cost for that employee is probably going to be closer to 130,000, 140,000 by the time you factor in their benefits. When you're hiring a freelance lawyer via an hourly arrangement, a subscription, they're not coming onto your payroll. They're going to remain an independent contractor. So you're not going to be paying a lot of the benefits. You're not going to be paying the bar dues, not going to be paying for their office space, their equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're having a huge savings um, versus a traditional hire. Plus, uh, you know, you might be able to find someone through a remote associate subscription with a much higher talent level than you would if you were only fishing in your own pond. There's there's my farming reference for the day. I always tend to have one farming analogy. So, you know, when you fish from your own small pond, you have fewer fish to catch when you're, you know, fishing from the whole network of freelance lawyers all across the nation through Law Clerk, you have a lot more options to choose from. Uh, another question, does subscription require a 10, 1099 on your insurance? So the 1099 is the tax reporting form for their earnings. The way subscription or hourly works is you pay law clerk, law clerk pays the freelancer. We're going to issue the 1099s to them. So you don't have to do any 1099s, which is great. Um, another question on subscription is... So the minimum number of hours every four weeks for subscription is 30. If you want the full attorney services, meaning they can go to court, they can talk to clients, et cetera, that minimum is 40. I know that's a little confusing. Um, but you could absolutely, you know, start out with a subscription of 60 or 80 hours every four weeks. And then if you get through your busy period, your trials or whatever, you could go back to 40. You can you can flex up and down. I think that's your question, Francis. It's a great question, but it, we do have those flexibilities. Man, if I had gold star stickers right now, I'd be given Anonymous and Francis and Daniel and every, everyone's asking great questions. Thank you. You all get a sticker. Um, another question on subscription is, okay, this is about malpractice insurance again. So you are only required to add the subscription associate to your insurance if you're going to be having them do work that would cause them to engage in the practice of law. If they're going to be doing appearances, taking depositions, giving legal advice to clients, any of those things that would cause them to engage in the practice of law, you would then need to add them onto your insurance. That's what it is. But if they're only, if they're, if it's a subscription and they're doing research and writing that written work, you do not have to add them onto your insurance because again, that's being done under your supervision. Uh, you are the supervising attorney responsible for the ultimate work product that goes out the door. All right. Well, once again, guys, if you already have a law clerk account, you can have, uh, you know, your dedicated law clerk advisor is there. They're kind of like your one-to-one -one consultant to help answer questions, help guide you in the right way. Each of our advisors works with a couple hundred attorneys across the country. So they have a good wide range of knowledge of how other attorneys are getting work done and they can help you succeed just like other attorneys across the country. So if you already have an account, definitely reach out to your advisor so that you can continue these conversations and find the best fit for you. If you don't have an account with LockClerk yet, or you don't have an advisor, have no fear. You can go to LockClerk.legal and register in just a few minutes, and then you will automatically be matched up with your own dedicated advisor to help you navigate your best hiring options through LockClerk. So 
Um, this was really fun. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for joining me. Uh, once again, I'm Kristen Tyler. I'm one of the co-founders and um, I am confident that whatever option you choose, whether it's projects, hourly associate or a subscription, we can help you get more work done in 2023 and beyond. So thanks for joining me and have a great rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.